although this is the second site we are visiting today, it is the last to be built of the military installations on the tour. The Fortaleza San Carlos de la Cabana, or San Carlos's Fortress of the Hut, was built directly after the return of Havana to the Spanish. King Carlos III ordered that an enormous fortification be built on Havana's Bay, specifically the large hill used by the British to destroy Moro Castle. 200 years earlier, the designer of Moro, Juan Batista Antonelli, said that he who holds that hill would hold Havana. Plans had been made to construct a castle here, but the project was abandoned. This time, the project was taken up by Sylvester Abarca and two French engineers in 1763 and completed in 1774. It is said that, during its construction, Carlos III was questioned about the importance of the fortress. In response, he went out onto a balcony of his palace with a spyglass and said, the cabana, such a valuable work, should be spotted from Madrid. When the project was finished, La Cabana was the largest fortification system in the Americas, spanning a surface of 25 acres. Its name, San Carlos de la Cabana, comes from King Carlos III and the hill on which it is built, named La Cabana, for the small huts that once dotted it. Its location allows it to defend the bay and complement La Real Fuerza, another castle directly across the channel all the while providing a massive land defense against any force attacking the city from the east. Being positioned on a large hill, the fortress overlooks the entire city, bay, and surrounding area. Its effectiveness was guaranteed by its combination of military engineering techniques from across the world, hydraulic systems from Holland, rampart defenses from Italy, and curved curtain walls, fully separated bastions, and external design from France. La Cabana housed a garrison of 1,300 men, but was capable of holding and providing for up to 6,000 men in wartime for a year, even with the absence of outside resources. 120 brass cannons, howitzers, and mortars of differing calibers were placed throughout. Despite its original design, extensive fortifications, and size, the fortress never saw battle, not even against pirates. It is possible that this was a result of its mere presence being a massive deterrent for any enemy. Its size, however, and proximity to the key to the Gulf made it the garrison for some of Spain's largest military bodies in the area over the next century and a half, and acted as a prison for Cuban patriots during the Cuban War of Independence. In 1959, Che Guevara moved his headquarters into La Cabana for several months after the revolution. Today, La Cabana and Moro together form the largest museum in Cuba, the Moro Cabana Historical Park. In La Cabana is one of the most important ancient weapon collections in Cuba, containing a medieval catapult and battering ram, weapons from Japan, Southeast Asia, India, and the Middle East, as well as its complete original cannon battery. A ceremony dating back to the 18th century is still in place today in Havana. To indicate the closing or opening of the city gates, a cannon would be fired from the ramparts of La Cabana. As the modern city remains open, one can hear the cannon shot at exactly 9 p.m. every night. Now we'll be heading across the channel by boat to explore Old Havana itself. On our way across, I'll take some time to give you a history of the natural bay and city harbor, which I consider an essential part of Old Havana.